So now we're going to discuss systems where there is a driving force being applied to a harmonic oscillator. So these are going to be damped harmonic oscillators which now have a periodic driving force. A common example of something like this would be the pendulum in a clock where either weights or a spring gives the pendulum a periodic kick in order to stop the amplitude decaying away to zero due to friction forces. So let's have a look at the physics behind these. Now here we've got the mass spring system uh, that we've seen many times before. So here's our mass M, and we have acting on it, we have the spring force due to Hooke's law, that's K times the displacement. We have a damping force uh, acting here that is opposing the uh, motion. And finally, we have this new force here that's the drive force that is causing the system to oscillate. So it's an oscillating drive force and the frequency of this force is independent of the frequency of the system. So this is not the angular frequency of this uh, mass spring system. Now, the way we're going to solve this, as we've done in all the cases before, is we start with Newton's second law, and we're going to apply it in this direction as positive. So when we do that, we've got to add up all the forces on this side and put it equal to mass times acceleration. So we've got minus k times x, because this acts in the negative direction from the spring. We've got minus b x dot, because this again acts in the negative direction. And then f we have plus f naught. And then I'm going to write this as the real part of e to the i omega t. And this acts in the positive direction, and so we have a, a plus sign there. And then this is equal to m times x double dot, which is just the uh, acceleration. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all the x terms on one side of the equation. So I'm going to have m x double dot uh, plus b times x dot plus k times x. And that is going to be equal to the driving force f naught e to the i omega t. So this is my uh, Newton's second law equation, and what I need to do now is I need to solve for x and find x as a function of t such that it satisfies this equation here. So to do that, just like we did with the damping case, let's introduce our uh, two quantities that we had from there. So omega naught, and this was equal to the square root of k over m. So this was the natural angular frequency of the undamped mass spring system. And then, since we've got a damping force in here, I'm going to introduce zeta, which if you remember was our damping ratio. Um, and this was defined as b over 2 times the square root of the mass times the spring constant. And so we can substitute in here. If we look at this, then if I multiply the top and bottom of this by, um, by the mass, then I get k times uh, square root of k times m divided by m squared. So m times omega naught is just equal to root mk. And so I can rewrite this as b over 2m omega naught. Right, so this is using the, this definition here for omega naught and substituting it in uh, to here. So if I do that, I note here that I can rewrite b. So what this means is that my b here is equal to 2m omega naught and then zeta. And I can rewrite my um, um, k term here, or k over m, I should say, k over m is equal to omega naught squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide through this equation by m. And what this will leave me with is x double dot plus b over m times x dot plus k over m times x is equal to f naught over m e to the i omega t. And now I'm going to get rid of the uh, b and this k over m and replace it by uh, omega naught and uh, zeta. So b over m here, well, b is equal to this. So b over m is just 2 omega naught times zeta. So this is 2 omega naught zeta times x dot plus, and then k over m is simply omega naught squared uh, times x. And this is equal to f naught over m 
e to the i omega t. So what I've done is I've rearranged this equation, and so we've got a slightly simpler form of it, but we still need to find a solution for x as a function of t. We don't know what that is. So let's uh, flip the page and uh, solve this equation. So here's the differential equation uh, that we got, and what we're trying to solve this for is to find x as a function of time. So to do this, we're going to guess at a solution, but we're going to make an intelligent guess based on what we see in the equation. So if we look at this here, we've got an e to the i omega t. So some combination of x, x dot, and x double dot give us e to the i omega t. So this suggests that we should try an e to the i omega t in the solution, because this will have e to the i omega t, we differentiate it, we'll still have an e to the i omega t, and we'll still have e to the i omega t uh, here. So that looks good, and then we want to make it generic, so we'll put an amplitude a, which this is a real number, in front of it. Now, let's differentiate it first, and we'll get x dot, and this is going to be i omega, and then a e to the i omega t. And here we can see we've got a problem, because x dot now, we've got this imaginary number i in the front, which comes from our e to the i omega t, this coefficient that comes down when we differentiate. That will make this term imaginary. If we differentiate it again, we're going to get minus omega squared, and so x double dot will be real. So we're going to have this term and this term will be real, whereas this term will be imaginary. But this is going to be equal to this term here. Now, since each term has got e to the i omega t, we can cancel through this. And so we're left with these two real terms here, and this imaginary term that's equal to a real term. That cannot work, because this term here, unless this term is 0, um, is not going to work. And if we set this term to 0, the only way we can do that will be to set the amplitude to 0, and then everything on this side goes to 0. So that, that's not going to be helpful. So what we have to do here is we have to add, we have to convert this from a real number into a complex number. And the way to do that is to just add a constant phase. So we're going to add a constant phase here. When we differentiate that constant phase, it doesn't make any difference because it's a constant. Um, but what we're going to be left over with now is we're going to end up with this being an imaginary. Once we've canceled through by this e to the i omega t, this will be a complex number, this will be a complex number, and this will be a complex number. And you can have three complex numbers add to give you a real number for the correct values of, the, uh, of this constant here, phi. So um, if this works, we're going to end up with a solution for this complex phase phi, as well as a solution for the amplitude. So let's complete our differentiation by uh, finding the uh, x double dot. So this is d2x by dt squared. And this is going to be minus omega squared a e to the i omega t minus phi. So now what we have to do to see if this works is substitute these numbers back into our differential equation here. So x double dot, well, that's minus omega squared times a e to the i omega t minus phi. And then we've got plus 2 omega naught zeta times, and then here we've got i omega a e to the i omega t minus phi. And then we have plus omega naught squared times x, which is just a e to the i omega t minus phi, and this is all equal to f naught over m e to the i omega t. And so now we can do what we we're talking about. We can cancel through this e to the i omega t. So we get rid of it here, we get rid of it here, here, and here. And so on this side now, we've got a common a e to the minus i times phi. So let's bring that out at the front here minus i phi. And what we're left with here is minus omega squared plus 2 omega naught zeta uh, times omega times i plus omega naught squared. And this is equal to f naught over m. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this e to the minus i phi, I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the i phi, and that will cancel this term here and give me an e to the i phi term over here. So this is going to give me, and I'll put the a at the other end of the brackets now, omega naught squared minus omega squared, so I'll collect the real terms at the front, plus, and then I've got 2 zeta omega naught omega times i, multiplied by a, and that's equal to f naught over m e to the i phi. Now I can write this out in its trig form, and I get f naught over m, and now I have cosine of phi plus i sine phi. Now, if I look at this, I've actually got two equations here. Um, here I've got the real part on this side, must be equal to the real part on this side, and the imaginary part here must be equal to the imaginary part here. So I can split these, uh, this single equation with a complex number on both sides into two simultaneous equations by saying that the two real parts must be the same and the two imaginary parts must be the same. So if I do that, what I'm going to end up with is a times omega naught squared minus omega squared is going to be equal to f naught over m cosine oops phi and then here what I've got uh, the i's I can cancel out because I'll have an i on here and I'll have an i on this side of the equation so here I've got to have 2 zeta omega naught omega times a and that must equal f naught over m sine phi so what we have to do now is we have to solve these two simultaneous equations and we have to solve it for the amplitude a which is a real number and this phase phi which is also a real number so we've got two equations two unknowns um, it shouldn't be that hard to solve them so here are the two simultaneous equations that we just derived and now we're going to solve these so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and eliminate this uh, uh, phi term here. Now I've got a cos and a, phi and a sine term here, both with the same coefficients. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the trig identity that sine squared of phi plus cosine squared of phi is equal to 1. So how do I use that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equation 1 and square it, and I'm going to add it to equation 2 and square it. And so what is this going to give me? Well, I square this side of the equation, so I get a squared omega naught squared minus omega squared all squared plus this term squared, which is going to be plus 4 omega naught squared omega squared zeta squared uh, times a squared. And that is going to be equal to f naught squared over m squared times, oops, cosine squared phi um, plus f naught over m both squared times sine squared phi. So if I take out the f naught uh, over m squared then I've got cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi and I'm going to use this identity to say that's equal to 1. So this side of the equation here is just f naught squared over m squared because if I take that factor out I'm going to have cos squared phi plus sine squared phi which is just 1. So if I saw, uh, clear up this side of the equation a little bit here what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a squared we we'll use square brackets now omega naught squared minus omega squared or squared plus 4 omega naught squared omega squared times zeta squared and that is equal to f naught squared over m squared. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide through by this term. So I'm going to take this term over onto this side of the equation by dividing by it. And then I'm going to take the square root. And what I get now is that a is equal to f naught over m times 1 over, and then this is going to be a big square root, so square root of omega naught squared minus omega squared, all squared, plus 4 omega naught squared, omega squared, zeta squared. And so we've solved 
this equation to find the amplitude of the system. And so this is now a mathematical expression to describe the amplitude of a driven damped harmonic oscillator. Uh, we've got to go back to our simultaneous equations now because we haven't quite finished with them. We now need to find the value of phi. So what I want to do to uh, get rid of uh, this amplitude A and find a value for phi is I'm going to take equation 2 and I'm going to divide it by equation 1. So what this is going to give me is it's going to give me 2 omega omega naught zeta times A all over A times omega naught squared minus omega squared. And this is going to be equal to um, F naught over M times co uh, times oops times sine of phi divided by f naught over m times the cosine of phi so this and this cancel and i'm left with the tangent of phi and here similarly my a's cancel and so i'm left with the fact that phi is the uh, inverse tangent of 2 omega times omega naught times zeta all over omega naught squared minus omega squared. And so this is the solution for phi. Now what is phi? So phi is the phase difference between the so this is the phase difference between the driver and the mass. So remember that we are displacement here x of t is equal to a to the e i omega t minus phi and our force the drive force was f naught e to the i omega t. So phi here is this phase difference between the displacement of the mass and the force that is driving the system. So now we've derived expressions for the amplitude and the phase difference between the driving force and the displacement of the mass for a driven harmonic oscillator. In the next video, we're going to discuss the phenomena that come from this system, and in particular, the phenomenon of resonance that is extremely important for many different aspects of physics.